Hello everyone, so um, my name is Hervé Brodin. I'm uh, talking about a, a work that we, whose main contributors are Pierre Bruno from uh, CRPGL in Luxembourg, Anne Fonta uh, and Claude Barras from uh, uh, the same lab as uh, uh, I come from, uh, LIMSI. So m the, uh, my talk is about uh, visualizing multimodal person recognition errors, so it's uh, very related to what uh, Juliette just told you about because it's uh, actually uh, a use case of the, the Camomile project uh, dealing with this uh, repair uh, challenge. So um, I'm going to uh, present you th those uh, few points, but mostly I will spend, uh, I guess, most of, the, of my talk on the, the demo at the, the very end with the, risk, with the risk of it not working because it's live, but uh, we'll see uh, if it works. So first I'm going to talk to you uh, talk to you a bit about the Camomile project, which is uh, one of the sponsors of this workshop. Then the repair challenge will be very quick because uh, Juliet did a very good job presenting it. And then uh, I'll be focusing on the, the actual visualization part. So uh, the Camomile project. So um, this is a um, uh, Shistera project, so a U European project with uh, uh, the, the partners that you can uh, read by yourself here. It's about uh, uh, collaborative annotation of multimodal, multilingual, and multimedia documents. So one of the main aim of this uh, project is to develop uh, a collaborative annotation framework uh, for this type of uh, documents. So just, I'll go very quickly on uh, how it is structured, but um, so uh, there are the, the, the usual work packages, one about multimodal person annotation components, so this is very focused on the repair. Uh, then uh, a work package about uh, automatic processing for annotation. By that we mean uh, machine-assisted annotations, lightly supervised learning, and active learning approach, so using automatic uh, processing to help the final annotator and uh, get some feedback to, to him. And uh, finally, the, the, the work package about actually building these uh, collaborative annotation framework. Uh, so I'm going to talk mostly about the, the two parts in, in bold here. So multimodal person annotation components and uh, web-based annotation framework. So just quickly now, the <coughs> repair challenge. So basically, uh, Juliet told, uh, told everything about it, but we are part of the uh, one of the three, C can I show something or is there? Okay, thanks. Okay, so we are part of uh, one of these uh, three consortiums. We, we are the QCompare consortium. So uh, three uh, teams are actually uh, uh, participating to this repair challenge. And um, so what more can I say? So two evaluation campaigns were and will be organized and the one is coming up very quickly in January, so uh, we are currently uh, developing our software to, to run these experiments. So, well, I have yet another video on the, the, the repair uh, challenge. Uh, sorry? No, no, there's no sound, so. <laughs> so basically, uh, what you can see is that uh, you can use a, a multiple cues to recognize the, the person, and, uh, and sometimes the cues are uh, not the, uh, Sometimes, yeah, there are, there are names, for instance, this guy here is not actually Nicolas Sarkozy, as you may have noticed, but so we, this is, the, 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 the cues are asynchronous, uh, and uh, we cannot always rely on uh, all the, the information, I mean, locally rely on this information to recognize the, the person. So what, what can we use to uh, actually uh, recognize uh, those guys? Uh, so there are multiple sources of information, so uh, the, f the first source of information is the audio stream, so we can do speakerization and identification. We can do speech transcription and try to uh, get some names from what people are saying. They usually don't pronounce their names, but it may give you a, a cue uh, about other people on, uh, on stage. So we can use uh, the visual stream, do face clustering, recognition. We can do uh, optical character recognition to get the names of uh, the faces on the currently speaking speaker. And uh, on top of that, we can uh, use the text stream resulting from ASR and OCR to do a name entity detection. And finally, normalize the name because we are expected to give the name of the person in a very precise uh, form. 
So what's the problem with that? Uh, uh, yes, we have multiple sources of information, but then it's also multiple sources of errors. Um, so, uh, for instance, just to give you an idea of the, the performance that we are reaching uh, currently uh, with our systems, uh, so in terms of identification error rate, we reach some kind of you know, 30 percent uh, uh, error rate, but uh, most of it can be explained because we have no uh, models for those speakers because we haven't seen them uh, before. And, uh, these are really the performance of the monomodal components, not, not trying to get information from other stuff. And uh, for speech transcription, we have this kind of a word error rate for face clustering and recognition. This is recognition score. This is very bad. And optical uh, character recognition is working uh, much better. These are just order of magnitude. Those are not real, uh, real uh, uh, error rates. But So uh, the questions that uh, the researcher like me might uh, want to, uh, to answer is uh, how do these errors uh, impact the overall performance? Does adding a new modality always improve the performance? Uh, and why did uh, my uh, fusion system commit uh, a particular error? So this is exactly what the, the chamomile use case that I'm going to, uh, to, to, to tell you about is about, to tell you is about, yeah. So, um, so basically, the, this use case is about um, uh, analyzing uh, error for the researcher. So there are, as I just said, multiple uh, use cases. So uh, we may want to answer uh, these questions because uh, Juliette gives us some uh, raw scores, or but not just scores. But uh, <laughs> in the end, they, they are actually just scores, but related to different different factors. So we may want to really have a uh, a deep look at the uh, at the, the actual mistakes and, and trying to understand uh, why uh, why we we do these mistakes. Uh, we may want to um, evaluate if uh, the, the 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 next brilliant idea that you that you have, uh, even though the final error rate is is lower, does it consistently improve uh, the system or is it just making more improvement than regressions and? But we want to know where it does uh, those regressions. And uh, in the fusion case, we want to uh, understand why a particular system uh, makes a, a system. So, so to do that, we've built a, a web framework that uh, allows to, um, to store and, and compare automatically those annotations which are made manually for the reference and automatically for our system. So basically, we have... A, these uh, uh, server here are storing the uh, annotations, automatic or, or manual. We have these uh, other server that uh, I, I will uh, talk to you uh, right after that, that does uh, some kind of processing, comparing various annotations and, and so on, and uh, returning a list of errors. And, and uh, you can use the, those two servers with, uh, uh, in lots of, uh, of uh, ways because the ultimate uh, project of the Camomile project is to do a, 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 a framework for annotation of the corpus. So we, 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 we plan to, to, to build this kind of uh, stuff where you can uh, online annotate the, uh, the, the, the resources that you have. You can do monitoring of the annotation since it's a collaborative process. But what I'm going to talk to you uh, right after that is about error analysis. So, so uh, this system is able to request some annotation from this from this uh, database and and uh, do some kind of processing on, on this annotation and show you uh, this kind of uh, of result uh, uh, that is a, a video player and uh, synchronized with it uh, some kind of uh, timelines where you can easily visualize the errors. So, just uh, quickly about the the annotation API. Um, so basically, uh, w uh, the way we store the annotation online is uh, uh, a corpus, let, let's say the repair corpus, is made of resources, medium, medias. Uh, each medium can be represented by multiple layers, either the reference annotation or automatic annotation. And uh, then each layer is made of annotation. So you can request from the web directly uh, using a 
uh, REST annotation API. Well, I'll go very quickly on that. Everything is, uh, uh, is communicated through a, a normalized uh, JSON format, but I'll go quickly. And so the, the, the Python processing API that I was uh, uh, referring to on, on the top right uh, uh, in the, the previous slides, um, allows you to, to, to answer these uh, few use cases that I was uh, talking about, like uh, give you, giving you the, the overall uh, evaluation metric value, uh, returning the, the difference between two annotations and regression stuff. So I'll go now on the critical part of my presentation, the demo. Uh, okay. this way I probably should have uh, okay so the the first um, I'll sit down if you don't mind <laughs> the, the the first uh, I'm here in the the difference uh, tab so basically you select your corpus you select your video unfortunately uh, I, I don't have here the, the video synchronized with it but the task I'm showing you here is the speaker identification task so basically you have here on this timeline uh, the, the actual uh, labels of uh, each speaker with uh, one color per speaker. Then you can load uh, the output of uh, one your automatic processing. So this one is the fusion of speaker authorization, speaker identification, and uh, optical character recognition. So you get the same way uh, the, the, the output of your, of your system. And then automatically you can get, uh, well, in red, very easily, uh, where your system is committing uh, some mistakes. So yeah, let's say that we are just want to fuse a speaker authorization and speaker ID. Then uh, you, you have a, here a clear ID that is committing much more mistakes. So, and uh, for instance, speaker authorization and optical character recognition, it takes a while. I'm sorry, maybe because uh, of the network. Did it change? I didn't notice. It did? Okay. So. So this is, uh, this is good, but uh, we, we can probably do better. I mean, uh, for instance, uh, here I wanted to compare those two systems. I just changed the, the here in the output, but we can also uh, use uh, this uh, regression um, tab. So basically, you load the reference here always on the top, and then you get, uh, you get to choose two uh, different uh, hypotheses. So this is the first one, this is the second one, and here are uh, the, the details for the, the regression analysis. So basically in black, uh, it means that both hypotheses are incorrect. In red, it mean, uh, in green, it means that uh, the second system uh, does a better job than the, the, the first system. And uh, so obviously what I didn't say, you, you can zoom in and uh, have a, basically here we're happy because uh, adding speaker authorization and OCR to this system uh, always improve the, the results. And uh, the, the, last, uh, the last mode of the, of the demo is the, the, the fusion. Uh, uh, I should have prepared this. So this is a reference. And so my fusion system is relying on those, um, those three components. And uh, it's making uh, these mistakes. So now I want to know why it is actually making mistakes around here. So uh, I might want to show the output of speaker ID. Then I get, uh, uh, these are not the, these are uh, uh, not uh, colors related to errors, but uh, really the, the actual label of the, of the, of the output. And uh, for instance, let, let's, let's put the OCR here. So here actually uh, our fusion system is, uh, is actually uh, acting very weirdly because uh, the reference tells us that there is this blue guy all, all, all around uh, and uh, our fusion uh, system only uh, detects it uh, here and, and there. So why did it happen? It actually happens because the OCR was uh, actually telling that, uh, that um, the guy is uh, actually present. So probably his name was, was there. So it means that uh, maybe if it can add uh, speaker authorization and OCR, if it's working. So it, it means that um, 
we could probably do better. I mean, I just found out uh, presenting the, pre the preparing the presentation that we wish I should uh, probably change the way uh, I use this OCR uh, approach because what we can see here is that the the OCR uh, does a good job of naming the current speaker, but actually it should be extended to the the speech turns uh, beforehand and after afterwards also. Okay. Oh, I have five more minutes, but actually I'm done. Oh. <laughs> So, um, yep. So basically, of course, this is a, a work in progress. Uh, we, we, we want to integrate it with the... Um, oh, how, how did I do that? Okay. Um, we plan to integrate it with the audio video player. Uh, we don't want to allow uh, anyone to access uh, any annotation. We want to version these, uh, uh, make some kind of versioning of the annotation so that we know uh, uh, what is the current uh, version of the, the system and what do we actually compare. And we would like to uh, also investigate new visualization paradigms. Like, for instance, these are simple ones, but uh, we could uh, think about pie charts uh, synchronized with the, with the timelines also. Of course, uh, this will be open source by the end of the Camomile project. And uh, I will be happy to, to hear about you if you think this could be useful to, to some of you, how we could uh, extend it with uh, other functionalities, maybe other modalities. I mean, it's not designed for uh, visualizing text errors, text processing errors, but maybe it could be extended uh, as well. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We do that uh, knowing the reference. So I'm not sure I understood what you. Well, question is whether you want to learn good then use on your data. But uh, basically, you could probably design a local weighting for the. Ah, yeah, okay, okay, you mean for, from the, the fusion point of view? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, we could. We should. Okay, other questions? When is the end of the project? <laughs> <laughs> it's after the end of the Rupert project. <laughs> But uh, hopefully, since we are we are setting up the uh, we're currently uh, setting up the uh, giving the final touch to the user management stuff, then we can open it uh, to all uh, all our participants so that you, you, we all have a dedicated uh, area and we can uh, we can do that. Yeah, we we'll we try to do that. Promise. <laughs> Maybe I'll just make two comments. One, I, when our colleague is saying we can't wait for the, not the project to end, but for the to tools, tools we've been source of the visualization of both system error for purposes of error analysis, and also possibly for um, human error in the sense of taking one unit as a standard and the other one as a system. Yeah. So you can show, show the difference, but both of those are clearly very useful from that you just gave. And maybe also I'll comment that it's actually perfect to say, oh, I should have done this demo live and show it happening instantly. It's very nice. <laughs> Thanks. Last questions? Uh, yeah, one more question. Um, so in the visualization you, you made, uh, it's very easy to see things which are local. But so does it allow to see things which are global? So like you would have to uh, Change the way of diffusion so that things which are at the end of the show are impacted, or that happen in multiple shows. Is that right? Nice? Um, we didn't plan on doing something. Uh, but by global, I thought you, you meant at uh, the beginning. Uh, I mean, global error rates or stuff like that. So uh, I would have answered yes to this question, but to. to, to um, uh, we don't really plan to do it uh, cross show. I mean, uh, sh showing at the same time uh, multiple uh, multiple videos. 
or it could be as simple as yeah, loading, uh, just uh, uh, artificially create a, a longer timeline and just putting the, the stuff right uh, after the other. So this could be possible. But uh, showing that uh, um, uh, how, I mean, we could probably think of a new visualization stuff like showing, uh, yeah, all the, the same type of errors uh, all, all over. But uh, it's actually, it should actually already be possible um, because, for, uh, for instance, here, the, the difference here are only showing if it's a confusion uh, correct error or a miss or for Salah. But actually, behind the scene, we know that it's a confusion behind. Uh, Matthew Drida and between Matthew Drida and Hanno Klesfeld. So we could actually tag this error with the same colors. I mean, the same exact type of errors with the same colors. So, because uh, here, uh, you can tell that there's actually uh, three types of error already. There is the confusion, the, the correct, so it's not an error, but also Miss and Fosaran who have their own colors, which you can see here, but it doesn't seem to, to happen in this video. But, uh, so we can, yes, uh, dedicate one color per error. A really precise type of error, so it could. Do. But what, so what I mean is, uh, so your example is great. Because we, you, we then make you an emphasis on, on how to improve the system. Mm -hmm. But then uh, you you cannot see if this kind of error is something which happens all the time, or if it's something very local to this show you're looking at. Yeah, so you, we could do a, a, a pie chart of, uh, of these, uh, these, uh, the, the error, like, you can click on a particular error, mm -hmm. and then you, you see all the errors of this type. Yeah, this is uh, also something we're investigating. At least to be able to navigate from error to error to error to the same kind of error, for instance, do filtering on the other type of errors. And by type, I mean, uh, we can go very deep in. Uh, yeah, yeah, this could be. Okay, any last questions? No, get the stackers.